Number 15, Myrtle's Plantation. Built in 1796, over 600 acres of land, the Myrtle's Plantation, aka Laurel Grove, was owned and operated by General David Bradford. Named after the Crete Myrtles that grew nearby, the plantation was passed down through generations and sold to the Sterling family, who also passed it down through generations. At one point, William Winter, one of the Sterling's in-laws, was shot on the porch. William is said to have hobbled inside the house and attempted to climb the stairs. He made it a good way up, passing away on the 17th step. Visitors and hotel employees claim they still hear his footsteps stumbling up the stairs. After several more sales of the property, the house's owner in the 1950s, Majori Munson, started to spot strange happenings around the plantation. This prompted rumors that ghosts haunted the place. Munson quickly got rid of the house and, in the 1970s, James and Frances Carmen Myers bought it and ran a B&B &B out of it. Frances wrote a book at the time, calling Myrtle's Plantation the most haunted house in America. Said to have been built atop an ancient Tanisa Indian burial ground, Myrtle Plantation has seen upwards of 12 different ghosts in its time. Almost as many people are rumored to have passed away in the house. Although Winters is the only one on record, this made Myrtle's Plantation a popular tourist attraction and landed it on the National Register of Historic Places. It's been featured in TV shows, books, and other media, and has gained fame for its paranormal activity. Number 14. Leap Castle Leap Castle in Ireland is one of the most haunted castles in the world. Located in Ross Cray, this 15th century castle was built by the O'Bannon family. The castle's dark history includes infighting between the O'Carroll brothers. One of the brothers, a priest, lost his life by a sword during a mass he was holding for the family. A dungeon was discovered in the castle during renovation. People were locked in the dungeon, which had a floor full of spikes, and were left there for their cruel fate. They carted away three loads of human bones when they cleaned the dungeon out. The ghosts that haunt the place are not normal ghosts. One described as it is said to be a sheep-sized creature with a decaying face. The odor of sulfur mixed with decay is smelt when it appears. There are also shadowy creatures hanging around the priest's house, along with the red lady, who holds a dagger in her hands, ready to use it, and the two young ghost girls at play. Whether you come across playing girls or it in Leap Castle, considering the place's history, I'd recommend you'd run for your life. Number 13. Sam Lisbury Hall Another of Britain's most haunted buildings, Sam's Lisbury Hall dates back to 1325, allowing for centuries worth of ghosts to haunt the place. One of the hall's owners took his own life because he was in debt and he is said to be one of those ghosts. But he's not the only one. Ghost hunters love Sam Lisbury and have investigated it for years. Some have come into contact with the ghost Dorothy, who mentions her father when she appears. Others have come across the white lady, who is believed to be Dorothy Southworth. She fell in love with the neighbor boy and planned to elope with him. But her brother took his life and his two friends, which made Dorothy go insane. Three skeletons were found in the walls of Sam's Lisbury Hall and are believed to be those of the three men. Two other ghostly figures haunt the place, a woman who has been spotted dragging a child behind her. And if you head into the priest room, don't be surprised if you come across the spirit of a priest with no head that lost his life there during Reformation. Red stains still appear on the floor. Number 12. Barry Pomeroy Castle This 15th century Tudor mansion was built inside the walls of an older castle in South Devon, England. The castle has a long and interesting history, which is probably why it is known as one of the most haunted castles in Britain. According to the English Heritage Guidebook, Who Haunts This Old Homestead? Two competing female ghosts, that's who. They're known as the Blue Lady and the White Lady. The Blue Lady has been seen beckoning to visitors in an attempt to call them to her tower. Some claim that if you heed her call, you'll fall from the tower. The Blue Lady is believed to be Norman Lord's daughter. Her father was also the child's father. She took the baby's life and, ever since, has mourned its loss. The White Lady also haunts the dungeons. She is said to be the ghost of Margaret Pomeroy, whose sister, Eleanor, was jealous of her beauty and so locked her in the dungeons for great lengths of time. It's best to steer clear of both blue and white. Number 11. Morris Jumel Mansion If you're near Morris Jumel Mansion in the city that never sleeps, you'll likely have a hard time falling asleep yourself. Sitting atop Coogan's Bluff Ridge near the Harlem River in Manhattan, this most haunted of houses is also one of the oldest houses in New York. Like most haunted houses, Morris Jumel has a rich history. It served as a military headquarters for George Washington, a battleground during the American Revolution, and when things died down war-wise, 
a 19th century party house, it's no surprise that during all these escapades, lives were lost within the mansion's walls. In 1810, the house was sold to Stephen Jumel, a well-to-do French wine merchant, and Eliza, his American wife, and previously his mistress. They revitalized the place, decorating it extravagantly and making it one of the city's most exclusive properties, which isn't a surprise, being that they loved high-profile friends. After all, they used to hang out with Napoleon in France but some of their high society counterparts were not having it. Eliza, after all, was born of a blue collar family and she certainly didn't belong amongst them. They started to spread rumors that her mother owned a brothel and had sold her as a child. And when Stephen Jumel died unexpectedly in 1832, the rumors hit their highest pitch. As many claimed Eliza took his life, Carol Ward, the executive director of the Morris Jumel Mansion told news.com.au the official story is he fell on a pitchfork while doing errands, is brought back here. Sometime during the event, she helps him clean the wounds, but the problem is taking the bandages off means that he bleeds out. She does inherit everything, so that leads to one version of the story. Or was it that she didn't have any medical knowledge and she thought that she was actually helping? Many chose to believe that Eliza watched her husband bleed to death. Eight months later, Eliza remarried former Vice President Aaron Burr, who wanted to steal her money and would later assassinate Alexander Hamilton. He died of illness in old age, and Eliza was ostracized and fell into dementia and decline in her huge macabre mansion. It is said that she let herself go, her hair a mess, her clothes soiled, haunted by her victims, and throwing parties that only she attended. Her ghost wanders the mansion today. Number 10. The White House 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue is not only the epicenter of the most powerful man in America, it's also the epicenter for some paranormal activity. Everyone from White House staff to the First Ladies have experienced some specters in the White House, and it's not just dead presidents that make their appearance. Former First Lady Abigail Adams has made a ghostly guest spot on occasion, dressed in a lace shawl and a cap, on her way to the East Room to do her laundry. Being the driest place in the White House during their stay in the late 18th century, she used to hang her clothes to dry, and she still does. Disembodied voices from other major White House personalities have also been heard floating through the yellow oval room. First Lady Mary Todd Lincoln, who held seances in the White House in order to speak with her dead sons, claims to have heard Andrew Jackson cussing up a storm in the halls, and particularly around the Rose Room, which used to be his bedroom. His ghost is said to have turned up at Harry Truman's White House correspondence. Truman sent a letter to his wife, detailing the eerie atmosphere. I sit here in this old house and work on foreign affairs, read reports, and work on speeches, all the while listening to the ghosts walk up and down the hallway, and even right here in the study, the floors pop and the drapes move back and forth. I can just imagine old Andy Jackson and Teddy Roosevelt having an argument over Franklin Roosevelt. Lincoln's ghost or presence is most often cited. First Lady Grace Goolidge claims to have seen his lanky specter starting out in the Oval Office. Lady Bird Johnson and Eleanor Roosevelt also claim to have felt Lincoln's presence. The Netherlands Queen Wilhelma was staying in the White House when she answered a knock at her door in the middle of the night to find Lincoln's ghost, top hat and all, floating before her. She was so shocked she fainted. Even British Prime Minister Winston Churchill claims to have encountered the ghost at the fireplace in his room. Not only does his ghost appear, but Lincoln himself had premonitions in the haunted White House. Not long before he was assassinated, he had a dream in which he foresaw his passing. Perhaps he should have been more superstitious. Number 9. The Octagon House Another of the most haunted and oldest historical houses in Washington, D.C., the Octagon has had its fair share of apparitions and otherworldly presences. Museum employees, curators, and the public have all claimed to have seen and felt specters on the spiral staircase. The Octagon's second and third floor landings, the rear garden area, and the third floor bedroom, the house's history cries out for a good haunting. The townhouse was built for John and Ann Taylor, who were distantly related to George Washington, and was later lived in by President James Madison and his wife Dolly. When the White House was set afire by the British in 1814, in fact, the Treaty of Ghent, which ended the War of 1812, was ratified in the Octagon. Legend has it that Dolly Madison didn't ever leave the Octagon. The first reported sighting on record was in 1912. The Washington Herald reported that Dolly's famed parties continued in the afterlife, saying that, between midnight and dawn, there is a low hum of pleasant conversation, the sound of silver and the clink of glasses, as a splendid company with gay liveried men drive up and take away the departing guests. Her ghost is said to reside in the drawing room, and a fresh scent of lilacs linger whenever she appears. Number 8. Rose Hall 
This Jamaican haunted house sits high atop a hillside, overlooking the coast of Montego Bay. The style of the mansion is Jamaican Georgian and was built in the 1770s. John Palmer is one of its most famous previous owners. One of his visitors, Hikewell, wrote of the property, It is placed at a delightful elevation and commands an extensive sea view. Its general appearance has much of the character of a handsome Italian villa. A double flight of stone steps leads to an open portico, giving access to the entrance hall, on the left of which is the eating room and on the right the drawing room, behind which are other apartments for domestic uses. The right wing, fitted up with great elegance and enriched with painting and gilding, was the private apartment of the late Mrs. Palmer, and the left wing is occupied as servants, apartments, and offices. Sounds like plenty of space to haunt in style. It seems Annie Palmer couldn't be torn away from the place, even after she lost her life. Her spirit, known as the White Witch, is said to haunt the Rose Hall Plantation. Legend says she was born in Haiti to an Irish-English heritage heritage, and she became an orphan after her parents passed away of yellow fever. Her adopted nanny was into voodoo and witchcraft and taught Annie her trade. Annie then moved to Jamaica, where she married John Palmer. Allegedly, Annie murdered her husband and two more after that, as well as many of the plantation's male slaves. It is said that Takao, one of these slaves, took her life. Number 7. Franklin Castle Built in 1881 for wealthy German immigrant Hans Teitermann, Franklin Castle was a cursed house from the beginning. His 15-year-old daughter, Emma, passed away there from diabetes not long after in 1891, and his mother followed shortly. Not only that, but three more of his children passed away over the following years. In response, Hans built up the home extensively to distract himself and his wife from their family's fate. They built turrets, a ballroom, gargoyles, and really castled the place up. Hidden passageways and rooms were also rumored to have been installed for use during prohibition and bootlegging. His wife passed away of liver disease in 1895, and Hans sold the house. No family remained to inherit. Hans is said to have committed terrible things in his home, which is why the castle has its haunted reputation. The Romano family moved into the castle in 1968 and reported some ghostly encounters. They tried exorcism several times, but by 1974 had given up. They sold the castle, which was later owned by Julie Garland's late husband, Michael Davinko. He spent a fortune on his renovation and, in the 1990s, a skeleton was found in one of the castle's closets. Sounds like Franklin Castle had some skeletons in the closet, literally. Number 6. Molly Brown House The unsinkable Molly Brown has yet to sink. She still wonders about her 1889 Victorian house in Denver where she lived from 1894. Molly Brown is known for having survived the Titanic sinking when it struck an iceberg in 1912. She was an outspoken woman and is one of the heroic survivors who helped those who plunged into the icy depths. Like Molly Brown herself, her home was high class but not too showy. She didn't come from old money, but rather a working blue collar family. Her husband, James Joseph Brown, wasn't rich either. In fact, he was a poor miner who later started to make a lot of money as a supervisor, enough to purchase his own mine in which he struck gold. Both Molly and JJ were very generous. They supported many charities and served others. They saw money as a tool to help out. Sadly, the pair split in 1909, but they remained friends. Molly started getting involved in the Red Cross and even traveled to France to aid in the American Committee for Devastated France during World War I. Molly's giving spirit is said to remain in the house alongside her ex, James John. They're said to keep to themselves, just doing the same things around the house they did when they were living. JJ used to love a good smoke, and pipe and cigar smoke are smelt throughout the museum on occasion. There are cold spots throughout the place, but especially in Molly's room, and some claim to have seen her ghost disappear around corners. Molly's daughter, who died young, and her mother, who lived in the home for a time, also haunt the place, as does a grumpy old male servant who's been seen in the first floor mirror. Although most people wouldn't want to run into a ghost, these are probably the friendliest that you could encounter. Number 5. Chillingham Castle Another old monastery turned haunted house. Chillingham Castle originated in the 12th century. It's famous for being a stopping point for King Edward I in 1298 as he set out to fight William Wallace and his Scottish army, and it remained a strategic location throughout medieval times. While the two nations continued to feud, English armies staged there, and the Scottish armies often attacked and raided the place, so it's no wonder that some ghosts continue to chill at Cunningham Castle. One of these ghosts, Lady Mary Berkeley, can be heard faintly throughout Chillingham Castle 
Castle, another called the Blue Boy, haunts the pink room where blue flashes of radiant light have been reported by guests and after a loud low cry, a blue halo was seen floating above the beds. Some claim that ghosts left the house after the remains of a boy and a man were discovered inside a thick wall during renovation, alongside documents dating back to the Spanish Armada. But the owners of Chillingham continue to sell it as the most haunted castle in Britain. Sounds chilling to me. Number 4. Woodchester Mansion Another of Britain's haunted houses, Woodchester Mansion is tucked away near a hillside, far and away from civilization. With towers and turrets, tall windows and gargoyles, Woodchester reminds you of any fairy tale castle you've ever dreamt of. But this fairy tale is a nightmare, owned by the Dutsey family. The second Earl of Dutsey was celebrating being made an Earl with a lavish dinner when, suddenly, his father's ghost appeared at the head of the table. He fled the home and didn't come back. Then, when a wealthy Catholic named William Lay purchased the estate, he decided to renovate the home. However, renovations were cut short for some unknown reason. The workers just up and left. Some say that someone's life was taken on site. Others claimed some paranormal activity made them flee. The mansion was abandoned, and even today, you enter to find what looks like an active construction site, tools abandoned willy-nilly. During World War II, Canadian and American troops camped in the valley and used the home for trainings. During one training, a number of soldiers lost their lives when a bridge collapsed over the lake. They brought their bodies to the mansion, and some still feel the presence of military men in the place. Male and female ghosts have been seen and heard throughout the mansion, making it one of the spookiest haunted houses in the world. Number 3. Raynham Hall as the seat of the Townshed family for almost 400 years, Raynham Hall in Norfolk, England, set the scene for one of the most famous ghost photos ever taken, the Brown Lady. Legend has it that the ghost of Lady Dorothy Walpole, aka the Brown Lady of Raynham Hall, haunts the place. Dorothy was Charles Townshed's second wife. Known for his violent temper, Townshed is said to have locked her in her room for having an affair with Lord Wharton. She was never free to leave the hall, not even to visit her kids, and she remained entrapped there until smallpox took her in 1726. Many sightings of the Brown Lady have been reported. The first on record was made during Christmas of 1835. Guests at the Christmas party claimed to have witnessed the Brown Lady in her dated dress and with empty eye sockets and a glowing face. After the sighting, staff at the hall fled and never came back. The next sighting happened the following year. A man named Captain Frederick Marriott had a hunch that the ghost was a hoax and actually a cover-up for local smugglers who wanted to isolate the area. Marriott stayed in the haunted room with a loaded revolver beneath his pillow. It was his third and final night at the hall, and he was joking with fellow lodgers about carrying his revolver in case you meet the brown lady, but it wasn't a joke for long. As he entered the corridor in the hall late at night, he spotted a lamp shining at the end of the hallway, believing it was just one of the ladies heading to the nursery. He waited for her to pass by, and she did. He recognized the woman as the brown lady. She was the spitting image of her portrait which hung in the hall. Marriott reached for his gun, but before he could, the woman held the lamp up to her face and grinned a diabolical grin. Marriott shot the woman right in her face, but the specter vanished. His bullet was lodged in the corridor wall. Pretty spooky if you ask me. Number 2. Borley Rectory The Reverend Henry Dawson Ellis Bull constructed Borley Rectory in 1862. The house was eventually renovated to accommodate all of Bull's 14 children. The church's nave dates back to the 12th century, and the church itself serves three communities. The place is prime hunting ground for ghost hunters, as they recall the legend of the 14th century Benedictine monastery that used to stand on the grounds. The convent stood nearby and a monk is said to have been in a relationship with one of the nuns. When the relationship was unveiled, the nun was bricked up alive in the walls of the covenant and the monk got off easy. He was executed. This legend was demythed in the early 1900s as a story made up by the rector's children. In fact, the 1893 novel, Montezuma's Daughter, may have inspired that tidbit about the nun's fate. However, whether real or fabricated, locals regularly report paranormal activity on the premises. As early as 1863, some heard footsteps in the house, and in 1900, four of the rector's daughters claimed to have seen a spectral nun standing about 40 yards from the house at twilight. When they approached the phantom, it vanished. At various points throughout the next four decades, Others claim to have seen a ghostly coach operated by two headless horsemen near the place. Later occupants of the house, the Smiths, discovered a woman's skull in a brown paper bag in one of the cupboards. They also reported hearing footsteps, seeing lights turn on, and hearing the servant bells which were disconnected. 
The wife also claimed she had seen a horse-drawn carriage. A paranormal researcher was brought in, and he witnessed other phenomena, like vases, stones, and other objects being thrown about. Additionally, spirit messages were heard being tapped through a mirror frame. After the Smiths had had enough, the Foysters moved in. Again, strange occurrences led Lionel Foyster to write about an account of the family's experiences, which included the servant bells ringing, stones and bottles being thrown, writing on the walls, windows shattered to pieces, and their daughter getting locked in a room without a key. Lionel's wife, Marianne, also claimed to have been launched out of her bed while the daughter, Adelaide, was attacked by something horrible. Foyster himself attempted to perform an exorcism on the haunted house, but he was attacked whenever he tried. After the Foysters moved out, Price investigated the place again, recruiting some 48 official observers to spend time there and record their experiences. In 1938, Helen Glanville held a seance with the planchette and is said to have contacted two spirits, a violent spirit named Sonnex Amours, who threatened to set fire to the rectory, and a young French nun, Marie Lair, who abandoned her order and went to the 17th century Borley Hall, where she is believed to have lost her life. Her body is said to have been thrown into a well or buried in the basement. Wall writings issued cries for help, including one that said, Mary Ann, please help me get out. Before we get to number one, my name is Chills and I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you've ever been curious as to what I look like in real life, then follow me on Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT with underscores instead of spaces. I also have a Twitter at YT underscore Chills where I post video updates. I'd really appreciate it if you followed me and feel free to send me a DM if you have any questions or suggestions. If you'd like to see more of these videos in the future, then hit that subscribe button because we upload new countdowns every Tuesday and Saturday. Number 1. Monte Cristo The Ryan family moved into the Victorian manor of Monte Cristo 50 years ago. Little did they know what they were getting themselves into. The most haunted house in Australia is believed to be the setting of a stable boy being burned alive, a pregnant maid thrown from the balcony, and a baby tossed down a flight of stairs. These are the ghosts that still haunt the place. Olive Ryan, who lived in the home for 50 odd years, said, I've had a hand on my shoulder. I've had my name called when I've been there by myself. It's nothing to hear footsteps on the balcony, and you go out and there's no one there. Olive's son Lawrence always knew there was something off about the haunted house. It always felt like someone was watching me. He recounted accidents that occurred in the home's history, everything from a child being dropped down the staircase by the nanny who claimed it was pushed from her arms, to a maid that so-called jumped off the balcony who was pregnant to Mr. Crawley. Why anyone would want to visit the place is beyond me, but Olive says they do. We get loads of non-believers and we have lots of non-believers walking out the door having a second thought about the spirit and the afterlife here. Thanks for checking out this video. Be sure to subscribe because we upload new countdowns every Tuesday and Saturday. Or if you're still not convinced, here are some of our other videos that I think you'd like. Enjoy!